Okay, this video is going to be action packed. Uh, how do we fire a conversion on an Ajax form and guarantee that the conversion actually went through like it was successful? It wasn't just a false form submit where they screwed up, our validations messed up, and it's recording a conversion when it didn't really. Okay, this one is going to be kind of interesting, I'm sure. Let's get started first. I'm not going to waste time going through some of the steps I've already went through. Create a conversion code. The only difference here is we're using this tab. Use Google Tag Manager, and then we copy this, copy this. But you might have noticed this conversion linker tag. So do you need this? This is a huge discussion. It's actually something I'm not going to dive deep into. But if you have Google Analytics and your AdWords account linked, you should be good to go, is my understanding. You shouldn't have to worry about it. There are other methods right here. You can review them. But essentially, it's all about third-party cookies and first-party cookies and how the old tags used to be third-party cookies, whereas Google Analytics is first-party cookies. So it's setting cookies on your actual domain. This is important because in 24-hour periods, those third-party cookies expire, which means people might convert and you might not get credit for it when those cookies expire. So that's the long and short of it. You can do some more research on your own. We want to get this conversion to fire, so let's just go into Google Tag Manager. First thing we're going to do, create a tag. This is a Google Ads conversion tag. Copy that. Come over here, paste it in. Copy this. Paste it in. For our purposes, that's good. We're just going to say Goog Conv. Now, for the tr triggering, let's go into triggers. We want to add a new one. Let's do it one way first using the form submission trigger. Then we're going to use the element visibility trigger. So you have two options here. You can wait for tags. That's a millisecond, so 2,000 is two seconds. If you want to wait for them, you can. For certain reasons, you know, you might need to. You can check validation. For our purposes, we're not going to get into these other fancy features. All I'm going to do is say, I want to trigger the, a form submission on this specific page here. So if you, let me reload this here. Make that success me message go away. Control Shift I go into the console here. You can do something like window dot location dot path name. Enter. And that'll give you the path name of where you're at. So I'm going to try to use this in Google Tag Manager. We're going to say um, page path contains this. Okay, just to do something different. Okay, so now we're going to say this is a form submit. I'm going to just say form submit one. Now, I haven't been naming these very well. You need to probably look up the convention and choose which convention because it can get really anal retentive in terms of how you name these. There are some people that are highly adamant about it, and I don't want to get into a debate about it. I just want you to decide for yourself on the best naming convention. Do a little bit of research. It will definitely benefit you. And then hit save. So we've, we've done something very simple. Created a Google conversion. And it fires when the form submission happens on this page. Okay, very simple. Let's go here. Let's actually put Google Tag Manager into preview mode. We will go here, close this, refresh. Let's, we have a uh, Google Tag Assistant going. Now we're going to say, Jared, J, at J. Okay, I'm going to totally do something. My, this form validation is not very good. You can see that's not a valid email address, right? I'm going to hit send. Watch down here, watch what happens. It recorded the Google conversion, even though the form didn't actually go through. And on top of it, if we inspect this, we can see that there's an error 
it says, one or more fields have an error. However, that didn't even show up on my page for whatever reason, a plugin reason, an out-of-date plugin, who knows why. So you're going to have a lot of these, and you need, you need to be aware of this kind of stuff. So in this situation, we would have fired a conversion that didn't actually happen. Nothing frustrates paid search people more than seeing stuff like this because they are optimizing results based on conversions and this totally inflates their conversion numbers, giving them false data, false things to operate on. So let's, let's submit an actual one.com. Let's just put a .com there. Hit send. This is what we want to see. We want it to fire when this message actually appears when the form is actually successful. So what can we do differently? Let's go back into Google Tag Manager. Let's make a new trigger. For this one, we are going to create an element visibility trigger. And this is where we get into some pretty technical stuff. So remember how we were looking at this element here? Let me pull it up here. It is a div, it has classes, it has multiple classes on it. And then it also has a success message. So we need to select this element. When, when the form is just loaded and there's no success message, it's basically an empty div tag. But we need to select this somehow first. So here's how I'm going to do it. And the reason, the thing you need to note is that this does not have an ID equals ABC123. It does not have an ID attribute. If it did, we could use this. We could select it that way. ID equals, you know, whatever the ID is for this specific element. Since it doesn't, we're going to use CSS selector. We're going to say div dot. The dot is notation for class. So I'm just going to say div dot and then that first class. I could use whatever class is available, really. We're going to fire this every time an element appears on the screen. 50% is fine. So this is, this is how much of the selected element must be visible on the screen before the trigger fires. Now here's the most important part. Select observe DOM changes. Okay. All right. We're going to, we're going to say that this is good. Let's just say, um, form submit to save and now we're going to tie that trigger to our goog conversion we're going to edit this kick that one out of there form submit to element visibility save now when you save it hit refresh here in google tag manager you'll see a little bit of a box appear over there we're going to refresh this now let me just quickly show you this element. See, this is what it looks like. It's just an empty div, okay? We're going to, again, try to, try to screw this up. We're gonna say j, j at j. Now, will it fire the Google conversion? What do you think? The form is not valid. Let's hit send. So it did not fire it. Dot com. And it did fire it. We can see Google Ads conversion tracking. And it appeared here. So that's good. But there's one more thing we could do just to make sure that it actually fires correctly. We can go back to that trigger. We can say, we can further validate it by saying some visibility events, form text. So if you don't see form text here, you can choose built-in variable and find control F form text. So you choose that and you can say contains, and we can just say message 
set successfully. That should say sent, but whatever. We're going to continue on. Okay, and then we can update that. Now let's refresh. Let's refresh here again. Won't make a difference because we know it's going to submit. Well, let's just submit. It didn't submit that time. That's great. Let's put .org fires, and that's just further validation because this is in fact part of the form. See how that is the end tag there. So long video, sorry about that. Hopefully this will help you track Ajax forms when you're trying to either look at a thank you success message or just track it correctly so you don't track incorrect form submissions. That'll do it.